K98Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at k98fm.com. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. It got to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Call eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> Eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. Eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. Game on, where progressives fear us and rhinos tremble. Welcome to the political jungle. I'm JD. This is Stacy. No one is safe. No one is spared. Lock up the children and the old folk. Welcome to the world of Libertarian Conservatarians. Hey, Jay, Edith, there. I got to tell you, I think I might go to church with you after this uh, J.D. and Stacy show. It's one of them uh, seven signs of the apocalypse there. It looks like the Jets and Giants did pretty good in the draft over the last three days, baby. Good Sunday morning, May 1st, 2016, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. J.D. and Stacy here, game on, part of that conservative commandos radio network on that K98 talk. Welcome back to all our political geeks, freaks, and back alley sneaks. Everybody within the sound, if you're a fan of the show, my very early Sunday morning voice, which is different than Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, baby. Get over to K98Talk.org, get in that chat room, tell Ron to put his pants on, join the conversation. JD and Stacy, baby, your radio pros out. <laughs> Are you my guest conductor on the crazy train this morning, baby? Oh, it's a crazy train. Everybody take a seat. Now it's a Sunday morning, baby. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. All right, this morning my co-host and I are going to be talking. Will all the candidates on both stops please stop lying about manufacturing? It's complicated, baby. Does Indiana set up like Wisconsin for Cruz? We'll discuss. Oi! (laughs) 
I miss Linda Richmond. Weekend update brought to you at Mr. Eric Williams at barbwiresatire.com. Baby, nonsense of the world and more. Remember, guys, we're not just live here. Sunday mornings at O Dark 30 and at that, 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 that here on K98 Talk. Stacey and I are live with Game On, part of that conservative commandos radio network on that K98 Talk. Tuesday, Thursday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Friday, 5 p.m. with a drive time leading into Yahoo Sports. I would listen this week to that WNWN, WNJC, 1360 AM. You listen to that conservative rant, the commandos radio network. And then you get to that Yahoo Sports. They tell you all about what happened in the draft. Big Whoop won't fight about it. After that, guys, Stacy and I have a nice new Facebook page out. Get over there, like that. Tell oh, six, that, that, that. Tell ten friends. Have them like it too. New website coming. JD and Stacy. J D A N D S T A C E Y dot com. And yes, ass bags. We bought the rest of the domains too. So and after that, show, it's not during it. Get over to speaker dot com. Hash Brown. J D and Stacy. J D A N D S T A C E Y. Find out a catalog of everything we've been doing here with that Ricky Ticky Tommy Rick Robinson to play everybody's game. We're going to compare J.D.'s Tuesday and Thursday voice to his Sunday morning voice. Good morning, baby. <laughs> Good morning. Woo! I will tell you Ooh. what, man. This primary has been such a piece of sand where pieces of sand shouldn't go. That It's a dumpster fire. That be Oh, that's right. See, my, my beautiful co-host, what used to be... <laughs> She renamed it. So we had, starting Thursday evening, the NFL draft. And my. <laughs> Jets and the Giants look to have picked, uh, picked really, really well. Jets took Darren Lee, uh, outside linebacker, out of Ohio State in the first round with the 20th pick. Ah, surprising everybody who thought they'd be taking that Paxton Lynch there, baby. They came back alive in the second round, took that Christian Hackenberg. Yes, that's what I said. They passed on, on Connor Cook for Christian Hackenberg. So, for all you Jets fans out there who heard this and did that, don't worry, baby. I think they're going to be fine. The Giants picked up a receiver. They got Eli you Apple. You know you're the only Jets fan. They got Eli Apple in the first round. Giants had the 10 pick. There was a lot of different ways that they could go. Eli needs some protection. Uh, Victor Cruz is going to be back. You know, they got ODB. Josh Norman's going to be in the division. And uh, they took Eli Apple. I think this kid's going to be good. Defensive back. I'm trying to think if he was also out of Ohio State. But get over to NFL.com. That's right. I plugged it. They don't even pay us. Uh, and just take a look at everything that happened over the draft over the last few days. Uh, the Jalen Rose story. You want to know what, Stacey? That's a story that you would absolutely love. The kid, there was this kid, Jalen Rose, who was a linebacker for Notre Dame. Hands down, lights out the best player in the country. Like, not you, a once in a generation, maybe once in a, you know, every decade kind of talent. And he had this hideous knee injury. And he would have went first, and everybody thought he was going to go on the third day and maybe not play. He's not going to play for a year. And the Dallas Cowboys scooped him up in the second round. He's going to be on the same team as his brother. I think that that's pretty cool. I, th- I, see, I think we have to tell NFL feel-good stories that doesn't end with, so then he was doing 180 miles an hour in his Bentley with eight pounds of cocaine and a dead hooker in the trunk with a four-year-old in a car seat with a gun to his head. <laughs> Don't you think we owe our audience that? Hello? Something like that. We like we like the good folks. I know. And we like football. And we'll get back to trashing each other related to the NFL. Oh, I don't know. Beginning in what, late August? Well. <laughs> technically, the, the voluntary uh, workouts start this week, so they're all coming into camp. So we, we can start now. Or do you want to do no, we don't need to start now. We need to actually <laughs> wait for games to start, I think. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, uh, uh, before we start with the, with the weekend update, uh, why don't you tell the audience you went to a super, super cool kind of festival deal yesterday, didn't you? I did. It was called um, Barbecue Brews and Blues, and it was a local festival, several going on in towns here around Georgia to benefit um, food pantries and community services so it was all goods went all good proceeds went to charity and it was a lot of fun great there was one charity in particular correct um is that still open to uh for the kids to get out and donate to or what was that one um actually that that charity is related to action church it does a food pantry it does uh the clothing drives 
and um, supports, uh, does a lot of support for women who are leaving abusive situations. Um, and that one is directly through the church. I, I don't believe they take cash donations. They take in kind only. Ah, very nice. Let's do something good. Buy your sins back from your souls this morning, kid. But now, without any further ado, the reason you turn into this program on a Sunday morning, we got the weekend update for that weekend in May 1st. Two, what the hell is this? 2016 from that Mr. Eric Williams from that Bob Wire satire.com, baby. Witnesses say Chris Christie had what looked like a religious experience watching Bruce Springsteen at a recent concert. One of his handlers said, I haven't seen that look in the governor's eyes since he unwrapped his last McRib. <laughs> Wasn't that the one? Wasn't that the one somebody got like millions of dollars because there was a dead mouse in it or something? <laughs> something. Like the worst, the worst barbecue imitation ever. Okay, terrific. <laughs> Ted Cruz took some ridicule ac for accidentally calling a basketball rim a basketball ring oh, in front of a crowd of Indiana Hoosiers. Jacket. Cruz then pumped up the crowd, telling them next week Indiana has the chance to drizzle right past Donald Trump for a slam drunk and save America at the buzzard. Yeah, I, you, you, know, you and I actually talked about that offline, I, the, the basketball ring. He should be penalized in the corner. John Boehner took a break from skimming his... <laughs> I don't even know what this joke is about, but thinking about John Boehner in his board shorts with his shirt off, chain smoke and camel no filter skimming his pool made me laugh. John Boehner took a break from skimming his pool long enough this week to call Ted Cruz Lucifer in the flesh. Ted took the insult in stride, saying at least I don't worship Trump the Antichrist, and if I really were the devil in the flesh, I can assure you, Boehner would be glowing orange from the flames surrounding him and not his tan. With the naming of Carly Fiorina as his VP, Ted Cruz went ahead and assumed the presidency on his own this week. Cruz started making appointments to his cabinet and even ordered a shock and awe mission on ISIS. As far as the pair's oh, alliance with Kasich, Carly told John to beat it, mailman. <laughs> Where is it? It has to. It was custom made for that. <laughs> Read that one again. Read that one again. No, I'm not reading it again. She said, beat it, mailman. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I'm the mailman. Thanks, Eric. I appreciate the setup. The movie Clinton Cash will be premiering at the Cannes Film Festival, and the tagline is, everything is for sale. To show just how money-hungry the hillbillies from Arkansas are, one scene in the movie follows Hillary as she sells her plasma for campaign cash, while another features Bill Clinton pocketing a cool 50 after making a deposit. <laughs> Okay, terrific. <laughs> Target stores have officially named their changed their name to Tar Target, Target, painted their bullseye logo rainbow colors and are telling any man who asks that they can use whichever restroom they want. Oh yeah, they've also lost 2.5 billion for their shareholders and are branding themselves as the next Kmart. Researchers say a weasel got into How the hell did he know? You you front ran something in our third segment. Good for you. Great <laughs> minds take a like. Researchers say a weasel got into a transformer at the world's largest atom smasher outside of Geneva this week. Oh, we got to find another story now. The incident yeah. caused a power outage that shut down the, ha the Hadron Collider, and scientists say it'll take several days to get the machine back online. Meanwhile, authorities are having to deal with an angry 30-foot-tall weasel who is terrorizing the local townspeople. What's his name? Donald Trump. There you go. Hillary angered American Indian leaders after using the phrase off the reservation regarding Donald Trump's insults about her. She really? seemed unfazed by the crit criticism, saying, don't worry, all I have to do is name Elizabeth Warren to my cabinet and that'll satisfy the Indians. But you have to admit, Donald has gone off the plantation. Oh, good Lord, baby. Send all those emails to that Mr. Eric Williams at BobWireSatire.com, who has brought us your weekend update. That weekend in May 1st, 2020, now, whatever year. Nicely done this week, Williams. Nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you who don't listen as my 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 hops and resin and capsule brain sputters out in different voices, uh, if you haven't gotten over there, make sure you guys get yourself over to the barbed wire satire dot com, baby. It's some of the best 
uh, uh, satire and parody out there. Eric's absolutely brilliant. He's done a phenomenal job of reaching out and finding great talent out there to contribute. So why don't you get over there, baby? And I don't even know what he's got going on, but I'm going to tell you what. If he's got it for sale, shoot the lock off your wallet, Hoopers, and buy something, all right? <laughs> all right, you cheap bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Stacy and I wanted to talk it talk coffee talk. Discuss uh, is this election a dumpster fire or a circus? Mm, discuss amongst yourselves. <laughs> dumpster fire. <laughs> Tell the pretty lady what she's doing. The I, I think that you know, we wanted to discuss whether or not Indiana sets up for Ted Cruz the same way that Wisconsin did for him, and it was a great victory, and he had the the Scott Walker endorsement. Um, You know, I was taking a look at the polling, and I know that there's been a a lot of talk about the IPFW Down Center poll, and there hadn't been a lot of polling. Correct me if I'm wrong, Stacey. There hadn't been a lot of polling out of Indiana except for about the last two weeks, and I've been focusing on the polls that either ran from the 13th through the 27th or we're specifically on the 27th and the 28th. And before we get to the setup, looking at Indiana, I know you and I both agree if the Cruz campaign doesn't win Indiana or have some kind of miracle congressional sweep in California, it's pretty much over, correct? Correct. I mean, I think Indiana is, it's absolutely essential that Ted Cruz keep uh, Donald Trump under 50% to prevent him from a winner-take-all situation. Um, And then, you know, California... Because of the way they're set up, I I think it's probably really hard to poll, but we'll see. Um, You know, the interesting thing about the polling leading up is in-state polling is showing things different than the the bigger national polls as far as Indiana goes. Um, You know, there is some scuttlebutt coming out of uh, actually Politico this morning saying, you know, some of Cruz campaign folks are actually talking at this point and and getting a little bit worried. Um, I think... Yeah, that's where I would be on this. I think, um, you know, at the end of the day... uh, you know, there are some similarities between the two. They are both open primaries, which have typically been a little bit more difficult for Ted Cruz. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not, you know, Scott Walker's endorsement of Cruz was very, very forthright, very direct, um, you know, gave clear and concise reasons why he would support Ted Cruz as the nominee and why he was encouraging his, his fellow folks in the state, state to do so in Wisconsin. I think the pundits in Wisconsin did a much better job. I also think the Trump campaign learned from that because he has not been as present with local radio hosts as he was in Wisconsin. Um, And, you know, Pence's endorsement, if that's what you want to call it, um, he basically told everybody who he would be voting for. Uh, He did not really, in my mind, make the case for Ted Cruz to the people of Indiana and actually spent about the first, oh, minute, minute and a half of it thanking Donald Trump for bringing dialogue to the race. True. And, and, and you know, there's been a lot of, of talk about how, you know, there hadn't been, you know, the last polls that were basically out of Indiana before this last round that came in. And I don't think what I couldn't find last night and everybody knows that J.D. is not a morning person, baby, but don't worry about it, because I was actually I took yesterday to do the math and actually go deep into this because I'd be I'm useless on a mo- in the morning. Um, <laughs> and, you know, for the, how is for the, that different from the afternoon? Well, the after- I said I'm useless in the morning. In the afternoon, uh-huh. I just- bring nothing to the table. It's oh, different. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Right. In the now morning, I got I'm it. How'd you like to mow my lawn? Huh? And in the afternoon, I'm I on. bring nothing to the table. And then okay. by the evening, I'm all. I hate this place. Nothing. And then Stacy says, "Shut Stacey. up!" <laughs> That's a pretty good synopsis. <laughs> Um, the, but if you take a look at the, oh, one of the things I couldn't find, and I think we're just going to take a couple of more minutes in this segment so we can do this in one and get the manufacturing in two. Um, I couldn't find what is most important in Indiana, and that's the county by county. Um, because I was trying to take a look and compare it to Wisconsin and how that broke down county by county. I think the reason that you see at least the RCP average and a lot of the consolidated polls, and you know, even if you go to Nate Silver, 
Nate Silver at 538 is saying that as of yesterday, 538 had Ted Cruz at a 65% chance of winning Indiana. The only problem with that, if you look at the four or five polls that he uses, everybody has this IPFW down center poll, which ran from April 13th through April 27th. And that's the only, it has Cruz up by 16. It polled 400 registered voters within Indiana. But if you take a look at that, Stace, and, and to your and Politico's point about why I think the Cruz campaign should be a little nervous, so you have this one IPFW poll out of Indiana. It has a margin of error, I think, of about four and a half points. Um, and they have Cruz up 16. But if you look at the other polls, ARG and Clout Research both run through the 27th and the 28th of April, have Trump up um, 2 and 9, respectively. Fox run, um, well, let's take those out, those 18th to the 21st. You had CBS the 20th to the 22nd, got Trump up by 5. So unless they're seeing something else internally, um, it is, it is, you know, I think that one is so skewing the average to the point of them being nervous. I could understand that because that would tell me this is either a neck and neck race or as we're speaking right now, Ted Cruz is a little underwater. Um, in Wisconsin, I pulled the numbers when, when that came out, Cruz ended up pulling 531,000 votes. Trump had just over 386,000 and Kasich had about 155,200 what scared me about that is with this tacit BS pact that they have, Stace, if, it, it, if the demographics, which I, I think are different between Indiana and Wisconsin, but where they do overlap like a Venn diagram, um, you know, Kasich still has a decent, you know, 155,000 votes in, in, in Indiana if he pulled like he did in Wisconsin could be the difference in the race easy. Well, and it could be the difference in a race, but I'm not 100% convinced that Kasich votes go to Cruz, so... No, I'm not. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm not at all. And as a matter of fact, I was looking at the county by county breakdown in Wisconsin, and let me just make sure I got this right. You know, Trump actually won the majority of the counties. It's that Cruz won the population centers, um, and that that surprised me. And you wonder if the same is going to hold true for Indiana. Any final Indiana thoughts before we pay some bills? Yeah, I mean, I just I think that. What the campaign was hoping for was a Wisconsin-like endorsement and, you know, participation within the state with some conservative thought leaders. And I just, I don't, it didn't happen. Sandy had a very good point before we go to break. It was something I had wanted to mention, but I had forgot. Thank you very much, Sandy. Uh, there was a lot of early voting in this race mm-hmm. out in Indiana. And, I, you know, I, one thing about New York, you have to understand it never matters. And there's, we have none of that here. I will never understand that. For all the sacrifices people have made to make sure that we have the right to vote, I don't think people should have, you know, seven months of Sundays to do it. But that's why nobody elects me to nothing. Coming back after the break, Stacy and I are going to tell you why everybody in both parties is lying about manufacturing. We're going to ask them to stop. They're not going to do it. And then we're going to tell you why. J.D. and Stacey, game on here in at K98. One break coming up. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. This is the most transparent administration in history. Not even a smidgen of corruption. Fact is, we had four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? If you've got a business, you didn't build that. The feeling most people get when they hear a Barack Obama speech, my, I felt this thrill going up my leg. I mean, well, I don't have that too often. Steady. It's time to hear the truth about America's biggest challenges. Ricky Robinson, host of America Off the Rails, will tackle the important issues facing America today. 
as he tries to keep America from coming off the track. Get ready to hear the truth every Monday through Friday starting at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 Central, here on K98talk.com and the Spark Radio Network. Are you conservative in a world of liberal? Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, you're not alone. Hey, I'm Daniel Stafford, host of the Stafford Voice, and I'd like to invite you to tune in each Monday, 10 p.m. Eastern, where I'll break down the events of the week, and together we'll learn about how they affect you. So sit back and get ready for the good, the bad, and the ugly of talk radio right here on K98 Talk. From the Vikings of Norway to my home down south to Washington, D.C., I've been around. I've seen it all, and I've come out on top. You better beware, for all you know, the bell tolls for you. Enter the bell tower or watch your step. 8 p.m. Thursdays, K98 Talk. Welcome back to all our political geeks, freaks, and back alley sneaks. J.D. and Stacy here. Game on. Part of that conservative command those radio network on that K98 Talk. Everybody right now, get over to K98Talk.org. Get in that chat room. Say hello to Stacy. Join the conversation. Remember, guys, we're not just here live at 11 a.m. Doing that game on for you Sunday morning here on K98. We're live again Tuesday, Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Friday, 5 p.m. Drive time leading to Yahoo Sports and at WNJC 1360 a.m. Big whoop. Won't fight about it. Get over to Facebook. J.D. And Stacy, uh, what the hell, JD and Stacy, like that Facebook page? Tell 10 friends to do the same thing. New website coming after the show. Hoople's not doing it. Get over to Spreaker.com, hashtag JD and Stacy, J D A N D S T A C E Y. Find out a catalog of everything we've been doing here with that Ricky Dicky Davy Rick Robinson. And for all of you trolling me right now on Twitter, you can have my comment right here. Scratch the left one, scratch the white one, and I find it so ironic that all of you follow the fake chocolate jeebus of conservative radio. So God bless, and now you have my comment for eternity. Welcome back, baby. How are you? Hello? Miss Lennox? Did you mute yourself? Hello? Again? Sorry. I did mute myself. Please. Welcome back. I, I, got, I got that very interesting commentary earlier. Oh, yeah, 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 hey, 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 green eggs and ham, green eggs and ham, try this, green one. eggs and ham, see if you can get a fifth finger in there, that'd be called fisting, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> oh, and by the more way, bell, more bell, the, more by, bell, by the way, thanks for listening, <laughs> Oh my God! They're not gonna. What are they? What are they gonna do? I'll tell you what. You got my comment right here, right here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So, you know, we had to tell the truth in the first segment about how we think that poll is an outlier and screw it, screwing, skewing some of the consolidated poll averages. But one of the things, I, I the, the pandering has got to stop on both sides on on manufacturing. <laughs> So manufacturing's been dead forever and a day, and this really falls into Stacy's wheelhouse. And would you like to give a little setup of the landscape we have and how it's being represented and how you actually see it? Well, how I actually see it is, is pretty simple. Um, there is a certain amount of manufacturing, depending on product, product line, and shipping costs and other things, that will always be done in the U.S. close to the market where it is bought. 
Um, an example of that is I worked for a company that made asphalt shingles for several years. Um, the cost to ship those to where they need to go from a foreign company is prohibited and would eat margin, especially since it's dependent on an asphalt commodity. What it will always be, it is, Stacey? It will margin. always be made here. It's Explain. too heavy to ship cost effectively. Explain margin to the kids real quick. Uh, margin is the, the profit you earn off the difference between what it costs you to make it and get it to the consumer and what you charge for it. Jumpkins, so. did you take hands off Schmeckle and pay attention to that? Write that down. Now, the other thing that I will say is I have actually seen manufacturing relocated to the U.S. to reduce shipping costs on really heavy stuff like tractors with wheels. So now there's an agricultural company that ships tractors, the body of it, from Europe and from South America and applies the really big wheels required here in the U.S. because A, they get more per container and B, it's more cost effective. Manufacturers are going to do what monetarily benefits them and all the hoopla. And I mean, even, you know, I wanted to smack Carly Fiorina during her announce as, as VP. You know, Carrier Corporation has a reason for moving the products out of Indianapolis to Mexico. Again, it's called margin. That is their low margin product. They continue to make it so that they have a complete product line, but there are things that Carrier makes that will never leave the United States for some of the reasons I just talked about. And what are all of the candidates on all sides you know, this, trying this... to... Wait, wait, what are all of the candidates on all sides trying to sell to people about manufacturing? Well, that somehow their policies are going to bring manufacturing, existing manufacturing, back to the United States. And to some degree, that may be true. Um, there may be financial incentives in terms of taxes and other things that are put in place that will keep manufacturers here longer um, because their margins are not as impacted. But the other thing that people are not talking about is what traditionally happens in a manufacturing environment. So you get a product. Let's all think about computers when they first came out. You know, I we got ours in our first desktop computer in the early 90s, late, or I'm sorry, late 80s. Okay, that was a couple thousand dollars. They were manufactured here in the United States, and it was based on innovation. As those became more commonplace and the prices came down, those manufacturers have to look for more cost-effective ways of producing them. The problem in the United States is not necessarily that manufacturers are leaving. The problem in the United States is that we no longer have a small business climate that drives innovation. The first products are always made here, always, and Correct. then they go overseas. <laughs> Correct. And, and one of the things, you know, and, and it's easy to paint with a broad brush, and, and I honestly, look, we're in a position right now where nobody trusts any of the candidates, nobody trusts any of the parties, and nobody trusts any of the institutions because they keep selling the voters a bill of goods that they can't deliver on. Yes, has y you have to take a look at what NAFTA and free trade and quote-unquote outsourcing has done to the U.S. economy. Globalization, in, in global manufacturing, the global manufacturing trend from a top-line perspective has been positive for the U.S. economy. Mm -hmm. What it's hurt is downscale. It's hurt the workers who that we, we have never, we have never invested in enough job retraining because all of the politicians want to tell people that these jobs are coming back. And as anemic as manufacturing seems to, be beat, uh, to, to, to have been beaten up, I found a fascinating piece in The New Yorker that had some, some statistics that honestly surprised me a little bit about uh, uh, U.S. manufacturing. So this goes in and it says, and again, this is from The New Yorker, uh, Business Currency, Why Donald Trump is Wrong About Manufacturing Jobs in China. Uh, the rhetoric would have us believe that global manufacturing is trending in a positive direction for U.S. factory jobs are on the rise here, and many of these new jobs are coming back to North America from China, which is struggling to maintain its manufacturing capacity. Basically, they're saying since March 2010, when manufacturing employment in the U.S. hit a, a trough of about 11.5 million jobs, there are nearly now a million fewer factory positions have been created most uh, newer factory positions created in the southern states, particularly North Carolina, South Carolina, and Tennessee. 
What surprised me even further, they said these jobs are typically good ones across that same five-year period. Average hourly manufacturing wages have increased over 10% to more than $20. On the whole, U.S. manufacturing is measured by Perching Manister's Index has steadily expanded. That surprised me a little bit. Did you? Yeah, it surprises me a little bit. But, I mean, when you take a look at at manufacturing globally as a whole, um, I've been involved with enough companies that have operations in Europe, in China, and in South America to say, you know, number one, most of what is going over to China is for the Chinese market. So products are being developed and manufactured over there for China um, when shipping costs make that the most intelligent move. Now, obviously, high-tech manufacturing has gone over there, too, because shipping costs are not a concern. But the prohibition to doing business with the Chinese reduces the profit available to U.S. organization by so much that to produce more than is just required for the Asian or Chinese market doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, the flip side of that is for those organizations that have um, operations in Europe and have operations in South America, the operations in the U.S., if shipping and, and close to customer is not an issue, actually will close manufacturing in the U.S. due to our at-will employment structure and the ease of reducing the workforce, which is similar in South America. So they will reduce in the U.S. and South America before they reduce in Europe because the barriers to shutting down or reducing staff in Europe are so high that the costs of doing so would outweigh the cost benefit of closing the plant plant for 10 years. So I mean, on, it, it's on, so restrictive. Put, put on your political consulting hat for a second. So now, if you're mm-hmm. a campaign consultant inside any of the in, any Republican campaign right now, mm-hmm. how would you tell they, your candidate how to be talking about manufacturing and what is the sale point? How would the you, sale now, point wait, wait, is me, the sale you, point wait, is wait, we wait, need wait, to wait, light wait, the, wait, wait, the wait, innovation wait, fire. Wait, 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 wait. Would you? My, my question is, would. Would a Stacey Lennox candidate have a different message than what we've heard out of any of the crop from this year? Well, yes, I would have laughed out loud at Donald Trump's comments about, you know, oh, if the Chinese won't take the tariffs, then we'll just stop taking their products and we'll make the TVs here. Clearly, the man has never been involved in greenfield manufacturing. Um, building a plant like that could take two years. And we don't necessarily have the trained workforce to do it. I mean, it was just the most ridiculous statement I've ever heard, and I would have hit him hard for that. Mm -hmm. The other piece is that my message, and I think you heard some of this from Rand Paul, and I think you heard a lot of it from Marco Rubio, and I think you hear some of it from, you hear a lot of it from Carly Fiorina as well. I think she was pandering in Indiana because of the manufacturing base and the recent closure of Indiana. Well, and she has, and, and she has. What we whether, actually whether, need whether to do, rightly, whether it's rightly or wrongly, she has an outsourcing story that comes behind her. I mean, it's easy to well, explain, not, yes. not between now and Tuesday. No, but what I'm saying is, if if you take a look at what the real engine behind the economy is, it's innovation and small business, and that has been declining over the last eight years because of barriers to entry through regulation and other means. Certainly, the tax code is one of them. If you really want to restart this economy, you need to go back to that pattern of innovation, production, you know, et cetera. So if you take a look at how the world has typically worked, right, America makes a car. We continue to make cars. We figure out how to make them more efficiently and cost-effectively, okay? And then a country like Germany is going to make the high-end car that's hyper-engineered. And then a country like Japan is going to make the most cost-effective model and enter at the, the bottom of the market. I mean, there, there's a flow to any, any pattern of innovation that becomes somewhat predictable when you look at it. But if you don't turn on the spigot of innovation, new products, right, 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 new right, ways right, of right. thinking, no, 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 you're I'm over. With, uh, right. But how would you be telling – if you told your candidate to say that to, to the American people, they'd all have changed the channel. How would you <laughs> – Tell that. How would you distill a a, a soundbite or a or, or a quick message for ca- for manufacturing for for Republicans? Manufacturing, we have to start making new products. That's what America does. We are so, innovators. We are entrepreneurs, and we need to harness that spirit, reduce the regulation, and cut business taxes. So sell it. So sell innovation and manufacturing. Mm-hmm. 
and then that goes back to fighting against all the red tape and everything else that that that's basically been thrown up by this administration in the past 20 or 30 years. You know, yep. you have people, you know, who run public companies. It was was it the founder of of uh, I think it was Lowe's, the home improvement company had come up a few months ago and said or maybe it was I don't think it was the Walmart family, but one of the, the major the companies out there said that in the current environment that it is now, they would not have been able to do what they did to make their to make their build billions and 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 uh and, and build it up and, and honestly like like the 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 the, situ- the 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 picture here is just a lot more complicated than people make out and i think it's why people are losing faith in the politicians but baby nobody ever loses faith to jd and stacy we gotta take one more break pay them bills bring you top to the noon hour here on that may 1st on k98 talk we're gonna have some nonsense of the world oh my god this story it, it's like a cross between the kid who cheated at the little league world series and uh above the rim which was a kevin bacon movie before some of you were born hopeless jd and stacy coming right back <laughs> Everybody, this is Jason, host of According to Me. I'd like to invite you to check out my show. It's a two-hour show that lasts 60 minutes in... Uh, listen, I hate to interrupt, but uh, one thing I can do is read off a script. Just say, uh, let me be clear a lot. It works. President Obama, I, I, I can handle this. It's a radio promo. I, I'm not green. I've done this before. Did someone say green? Now, Al Gore is here. Listen, I'm just trying to record a radio promo. Do you mind? Now, uh, do you say good things about me on the show? <laughs> no, not at all. But if it makes you feel any better, I rip on Republicans just as much. The AM radio frequencies give off very high levels of radiation. Look, my show is on the internet, which you invented. Can I I just do my promo? I got a pen. I can veto that, you know. I know you got a pen. It's not a law. It's a radio promo. Listen, listen, just listen to my show. Barack Obama and Al Gore hate it, so you're going to love it. Here's an executive order. Don't listen to a show. He doesn't like me. He's racist. And he doesn't recycle either. That's it. I'm done. It's According to Me, Wednesdays, 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on K98 Talk. Wondering why you're up early with us on a Sunday morning making a cocktail? Yes, Rick, News I'll lately switch got the you breaks drinking. one day. Hung over from the mainstream media by Sunday? We are, and we got you covered. We sure do. We got your hangover cure for those weekly news blues. So sit back, top off your mimosa, and add some Baileys to that coffee. Take a match to your copy of the New York Times. Light, funny, and oh yeah, news with booze. And a lot of laughter. Welcome to Bloody Marys and Broadsheets. If it's Sunday, it's Bloody Marys and Broadsheets. We're your cure from your weekly news hangover. We will never fully understand what we've asked of our military service members or their families, asking them to put themselves in harm's way, to endure it all. But we do understand that it's our turn, our duty, to keep them secure for the rest of their lives. Wounded Warrior Project long-term support programs help our most severely ill or injured veterans live independently, at no cost, for life, so that they might stand at ease. Join us at findwwp.org. K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget. Web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at k98fm.com. Do not like me green eggs and ham. I'll get my liquor delivered to my house early in the AM. JD and Stacy back here on that game on that K98 Talk. Hey, everybody, right now, get over to K98Talk.org. Get in that chat room. Say hello to Stacy. Tell pants. Tell pants. Tell pants to put his Ron on. Oy, <laughs> 
<laughs> join the conversation. Remember, guys, we're not just live here Sunday, 11 a.m. We do it again, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard, Tuesday and Thursday for another edition of Game On here on K98 Talk. Friday, 5 p.m. drive time, leading to that Yahoo Sports on the WNWNJC, 1360 a.m., serving that Philadelphia, Southern Jersey, Northern Delaware. After the show, Hoopals, remember, get over that Facebook page, like it, get other 10 people, have them like it. Website coming more, and then you got some hash browns, hash browns, Spreaker.com, hash browns, JD and Stacy, JDA and DSTACEY. Get a catalog of everything we've been doing here with that Ricky Ticky Tabby Rick Robinson. Welcome back, baby. Thank you. <laughs> you like my Dr. Seuss? I do. <laughs> I can't do the rest of it in case the show ever goes up on AM radio. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but I have a, I have a, I have a galloping id right now, just running around. I hate this head. place. <laughs> Nothing works here. The medications don't work. <laughs> no, no, no. I've been here for seven years. Oh my god. I've been on Twitter almost seven years, and God, it's just turned into a cesspool. Oh, my last comment to. Uh... What the f- goes in the basket? <laughs> I, I hear some radio hosts get ashy. <laughs> What? It gets dry in the studio. Mm. <laughs> okay, terrific. <laughs> now I got pictures of Ashley Larry from the Chappelle Show in my head. <laughs> oh, oh, son, God. you want to buy a TV? You want to buy a TV, son? <laughs> <laughs> Timing is everything. Oh. JD, get a grip. It rubs the lotion on its skin. It does this whenever it's told. That's what when you're I hate that. I just hate that. But think about it. Think about it. If you're I ready. just, I hate it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ugh. I gotta. <laughs> I gotta stop. I'm killing myself here. Oh, God. Okay. So, one of my favorite feel-good stories of the year. This is from the New York Times. He said he was 17, but high school basketball player oh, this is awesome. may be closer to 30 years old. What did you say, J.D. and Stacey? That's right. A South Sudan immigrant. This goes to our refugee vetting process, by the way. I was just thinking. I was just thinking the same thing. I was just thinking the same thing. They have well, this really- is actually oh, Canada, they're so they're it's not us, but you know, Canada is us. What? What, I mean, what, what is there a big moat with a dragon separate? What is okay when they throw this thirty-year-old weirdo out of high school without a job in Canada? What's he gonna do? He's gonna walk into New York and start selling halal meat over on Thirty Fourth Street and completely disappear into society. Trust me, there's a whole row with him. Anyway, uh, a South Sudan immigrant and standout basketball player at a Catholic high school in Canada has been arrested. After revealed his true age is not 17, but closer to 29, the authorities said the student, Jonathan Nicola, who is 6'9 and wears size 16 shoes. Okay. Have you been to Canada? Stacy? Uh, yes, I have. Okay, I've been to Canada. I'm sure people in the chat room have been to Canada. All right. There are no 6'9, 16 size shoe wearing brothers. Anywhere in Canada that aren't doing something shady. So he comes in and he decides, I guess everybody turned to, to, to turn a blind eye. Da, 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 da. He, was, blah, 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 blah. he listed his birth date as 1998, but he was born in 86. Is this great or what? But he was living with the basketball coach for the high school as part of a program. And what happened was at some point when somebody emigrates, they take the fingerprint and then they're like, okay, let's run this fingerprint against all the other fingerprints that have tried, and it turned out he had applied with his regular age earlier. My question is, why don't you run the fingerprints before you let him in? Wait a minute. The 30-year-old who is posing as a 17-year-old, six foot nine, with the 16-year-old mm-hmm. shoes from the Sudan, was living with the basketball coach and his family? You're correct. Oh, you want to know what? They probably could find his fingerprints on the coach's wife, because this is just getting strange. Strange. No, it's 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 a program called Canada Ham's Homestay, which finds homes for foreign students. He came over on a student visa. 
the arrest prompted an outpouring on social media. One Twitter user said, so you're telling me this whole time I was playing hard defense on a man that could basically be my dad? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. But again, it all goes back to process. They had the guy's fingerprints on application one. They had the guy's fingerprints on application two. Why doesn't that match system happen before the person gets here? I reiterate my my, my first statement. They're going to find fingerprints on the wife. All right. So basically the best way to stop murder in Buenos Aires is to ban dancing, correct? Yes, I saw that. Oh, my God. I mean, judges here have too much power. Please tell the kids what we're talking about. Well, basically, a single judge in Buenos Aires decided he, that not, dancing, you... for all intents and purposes, is now illegal. So he banned all commercial dancing with live or recorded music in Buenos Aires, possibly making even wedding receptions illegal. I did, did, oh. And why did he do this? Well, it was not immediately clear, but I believe it had something to do with what we would traditionally call here in the U.S. a rave. So there were some drugs and somebody got killed at a party where they were dancing to techno dancing. And so because one person got killed because killed they took some ecstasy when they shouldn't, nobody can dance anymore. Anywhere. Not even at a wedding. We got a little rave music there in the background. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but what... Kill me about this. As a matter of fact, for those of you, uh, uh, go check out the Viceland channel uh, if your cable provider has it. It's Vice Media. They have a great series called Noisy, which is a it's basically a music documentary. And they had gone on to this, and I found this amazing. I was watching the documentary in some of these places, and basically what's happening is just to Stacey's point, like the rave culture and the dance music has hit over there, but they're kind of violent countries, so with the drugs. Here in Vegas, you have a bunch of overdoses. There you have overdoses and people start shooting people. So the government basically, yeah. So kids, this is this is what you're setting yourself up for with Hillary and Donald Trump. All right, no more dancing because the government says so. Uh, do you want to live to be a thousand years old? No, I don't. I don't. As a former, apparently nurse, some dude wants us to though. As a former nurse, are you buying any of this? I'm really not. I certainly think that, you know, human life can be extended. Do I ever think we're going to live to something like a thousand? No. I mean, at our core, we're biological creatures and biological creatures deteriorate at certain rates, no matter what you do. Was this was it in this article or, or something else that came up? Is this where they were talking about the guys talking about well he's trying to figure out the first head transplant or something like that? Yeah, no, that came out that they're trying to do the first head transplant. That just that's creepy. Ah, a thousand years. So I started doing the math on this, right? So at what point if everybody starts living to a thousand remember when the idiot con he's one of your idiot congressmen, isn't he? Benny Johnson? The moron from isn't Which he? Which one? Georgia? Benny Johnson. The, the one who seriously, and it, it's up on the YouTubes, on the interwebs, where he went, he, he was talking to the, to the, to the, to, it was, a, it was a, a, a Pentagon hearing, and I guess they wanted to put more troops on Guam, and, and Benny Johnson goes, but if you put more troops, eventually the weight, the island might flip over. <laughs> Oh God! I swear to, you haven't. Are seen, you I'm, sure that wasn't Sheila Jackson? No, 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 no. <laughs> this, is, this is Benny Johnson for damn sure. But at what point, if everybody starts living to a thousand, do we literally start getting to the point where it's just people everywhere? Well, I mean, I I don't know. I imagine you know, as 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 the life expectancy has increased, um, the point at which you choose to start a family has increased. So I don't know. Maybe you don't have your first kid until you're 832. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing for the last 832 years? I wasn't gonna settle down, baby. I was just getting started. exactly. I was just getting started. Oh, my God. I know people that can't stay married for six months. I just stayed married for a thousand years. All right. Oh God. World's largest atom smasher reportedly shut down by Roden. This evidently is called a callback because Williams and Stacy and I don't speak before the show, and we just take oh. it. We have the same story. So this is out of ABC News, so it's got to be real. A weasel-like, a weasel-like, a weasel-like Roden shut down the world's most powerful atom smasher after it. Every time I hear atom smasher, I just hear, Who is your daddy? And what does he do? 
Apparently, north through a power cable facility official said today, the Large Hadron Collider, blah, 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 blah. So basically a giant rat with fangs. What the hell happened here? Well, it basically chewed through. I mean, you know, even highly technological uh, processes run on electricity, apparently. The thing isn't solar powered, so it chewed through a power cable. Oh, Sandy just corrected me. It was it was Hank Johnson. Uh, house.gov. You have to you have to pull that up on the YouTube. Where, well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, green eggs and ham of all ages. The fastest hour in conservative radio is wrapping up. We want to thank everybody, old listeners, new listeners, everybody in between. We're going to be back live too. Ugh, oh, ugh. Oh, we have another primary show. We'll have a primary show on this Tuesday from Indiana. It's the whole ball no, of wax. do we have to? Uh, well, right now, I'm just going to say, baby girl, baby girl, baby girl. You got them keys? Oh, I got them keys. Let's go. <laughs> Tell the nice people where they can find you. Oh, you can probably find me on Twitter, I don't know, tomorrow at Scott's Fire, S-C-O-T-S-F-Y-R-E, and on Facebook at Stacey Lennox. And you can find me at Game on JD on the Twitters and on Facebook and here on the radio. You want to know why? Because I ain't going anywhere. I'm taking off the bulletproof vest. Take your best shot. I guarantee you one thing. I will live through it, and I'll see your ass Tuesday. I'm looking for you, you Occupy freaks, with your glitter bombs. Bring it on! Bring on the glitter. Everything has changed. Everything has changed in the last few years. Conservatives used to take it, and we're not taking it anymore. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works.